This is St. Mark United Methodist Church's online worship service. Today is Sunday, April 18th, 2021. It is the third Sunday of Easter. Please be sure to complete the online connection card. There's a link in the description to this video. When you fill out the connection card, you help us take attendance, but you also let us know about your joys, concerns, and prayer needs for the week to come. That's important to us. We have an announcement from the Staff Parish Relations Committee. They're glad to share with you that we've received word from Bishop Sue Halpert Johnson and our Superintendent, Dr. Michael McQueen, that Dr. Dana and Reverend Jennifer are being returned to us for another year of ministry and mission. We hear from the Western North Carolina Conference that Dr. Josh's appointment with us also continues for the next year. The Staff Parish Relations Committee is grateful to receive these as our pastor and associate pastors. Mark your calendar for Dr. Dana's weekly Bible study. They're studying a unit on the book of Genesis. Sessions are presented on Zoom on Wednesdays at 5 o'clock p.m. The study is open to any and all. Drop in and check it out. You can find the Zoom invitation in this week's St. Mark Remarks and on our website's announcements page. Our next outdoor worship service on the patio at Haygood Memorial UMC in Atlanta is scheduled for 4 o'clock p.m. on Sunday, April 25th. This service takes the place of the Palm Sunday service that had to be canceled due to bad weather. The Eastertide theme and focus on the children's ministry will remain the same for this service, with Shella Stevens leading worship. Attendance will be limited, and registration is required to attend. You can find the registration link in our St. Mark Remarks and on our website's announcements page. Good morning, and welcome to St. Mark Online. We are Robert Giacomini and Richard Augusta, and we're excited to worship with you today. It is our prayer that today you will be blessed and feel the love of St. Mark, the love of Christ, and the love for one another. As we prepare for worship, we invite you to light a candle with us as we bring the Spirit of Christ to this holy and sacred time.
And now, St. Mark family, let's begin our time of worship with a brief word of prayer. Let us pray. Author of life, you have given us breath to praise you, eyes to behold your mercy, and words to proclaim your abiding love. Breathe upon us the promised Holy Spirit, that our minds may be open to your wisdom and our tongues may be boldly declare that you alone are God. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now, friends, let us join together in the Litany of Affirmation. See what love God has given us, that we should be called God's children. What God foretold by the mouths of the prophets, God fulfilled. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when God appears, we shall be in God's likeness. What God foretold by the mouths of the prophets, God fulfilled. Everyone who thus hopes in God is made pure, as God is pure. What God foretold by the mouths of the prophets, God fulfilled. Whoever does right is righteous, as God is righteous. What God foretold by the mouths of the prophets, God fulfilled. Good morning. Hear now the word of God. 1 John, chapter 3, verse 1 through 7. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us, and that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, just as he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins, and in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. He who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hello, everyone. Today is the third Sunday of Easter, and we hear more about God's love for us. Today's epistle lesson comes from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1-7. through 7. This lesson talks about the love our Creator has given to us, and that those who love God are the children of God. We are God's children. God is our parent who loves and desires only the best for us. Because we're in the Easter season, we continue to celebrate the resurrection of God's son, Jesus, 
We continue to celebrate that he rose from the dead, that he conquered sin and death, and that he lives forever. Because Jesus gave his life for us, we should give our best for others. If we really love God, then our lives should be full of love for others. Love isn't simply something we feel. It's how we act. It's what we say. It's what we do. We shouldn't carry hatred in our hearts or wish bad on anyone. Now, I know this may be hard sometimes, especially when we see so many people being hateful and mean and causing hurt and harm to others, and maybe even to us. The scripture says, everyone who does wrong and practices sin commits an act of rebellion. And sin is rebellion. But everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as Jesus is righteous. Would you pray with me? God, we are still celebrating the resurrection of your son, Jesus. And we know that you love us because you sent Jesus to show us what love looks like. We want to be like Jesus. We want to love, even though it may be hard. Help us, God. Help us to love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, from Luke 24, beginning at verse 33, and reading through verse 48. That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how they had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in the name to all nations." beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. My mother-in-law was the greatest cook ever. She could create a wonderful southern meal of fried chicken, rice with gravy, squash casserole, green beans with ham hocks, and other amazing sides that went with such a meal. She'd cook up so much that we would have leftovers for days whenever we would visit her. Now, that was not a bad thing, as leftovers were some of the best meals at her table. I have friends who don't abide leftovers, but I find the best tastes take a while to mingle together as they sit together. In the same way, this Easter season, I want us to examine the leftovers of the great celebration that was Easter. Over the next few weeks, we're going to look at all that Christ brought forth on that first Easter and allow the leftovers to wet our spiritual taste buds and to hopefully give us sustenance and strength for the living of Easter life in these days of 2021. I hope that you'll join us and invite others to come and be a part. Would you pray with me? May the words of my mouth, the thoughts and the meditations of each of our hearts be found pleasing and acceptable in your sight, Lord, our rock, our redeemer, our resurrection. Amen. 
the scriptures quite unheard of, at least today. A group of friends getting together in the same tight space. Well, we know it's been more than a year since we've had gatherings inside of such magnitude. There have been no covered dish suppers or even Wednesday night dinner meals and Wade Hall with our friends. As we slowly begin to move forward, getting together to see each other and eat again, I must confess, I, I have a sense of fear that's been built in me. A sense of dread, of unbelief, if you will. Will everybody have their mask and wear it properly? Will everyone have their vaccinations? Will everyone stay safely distant from each other? I know I have a great apprehension and fear, but still, I long for the moments of the past to return without fear and apprehension. I realize they will return, but in a different way. And there will be a new normal when we and they do return together. Getting to know how to move forward is going to be very important. The disciples long for the return of those gatherings. They long to be in the boat with Jesus preaching and teaching. They miss the theological discussions on the road with their rabbi. They wanted to pick them up again. They wanted to share a meal again with the one who was their friend, Jesus. Oh, to go back to the normal before all hell broke loose and fear and death became the new norm. No wonder they thought their mind was playing tricks on them or that they were seeing a ghost. It was what their hearts wanted most, but he was dead. And in fact, they'd heard that morning that the body had been stolen. So how could they believe? But Jesus broke the fear with his directness. Why are you scared? Why aren't you believing what you're seeing? Despite the fact that Jesus had taught the disciples that he would rise, they didn't listen. Despite the fact that all ran and denied him, and despite the fact they were all locked up in fear and dread, the gracious love of Jesus reached out and offered them the proof that they might need. Touch and see. He even offered to eat before them so they could see that he was real, very alive, was there before them. They had to get to know Jesus again and to know him as an alive and living Jesus. While they should have understood and welcomed Jesus with open arms and hearts, they did not understand, nor did they believe. So Jesus presented himself to them to allow them to get to know him all over again, to get to know him on this side of Easter. Jesus told the stories of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms, so that understanding might come to their minds and their hearts so that they would believe. Getting to know Jesus alive was so important. For these followers of Jesus, it was vital. You see, it was their witness that became the word alive and moving in their culture and in all cultures to come. Yet it was only the half of it. They needed to get to know Jesus, not only alive, but to know Jesus' plan for those who would believe with open hearts. The hearts of each one was open wide, and their minds began to comprehend the ministry plan of Jesus, their Christ. In some, the disciples learned that the core of the gospel was found in two truths. First, Jesus, suffering and resurrection. And secondly, the proclamation of repentance and forgiveness of sins. I like how the author of Homiletics states it. After Jesus opened their minds to understand the Scriptures, they were not released from future duty. No, they had to get to know the plan of Jesus for going forward into a new normal. So here we are. Here we are again after the resurrection, still socially distanced behind our closed doors and properly covering our face with masks. Here we are getting to know Jesus alive and living for all. Here we are getting to know Jesus' plans because we are not released from a future or from a joyful duty to be witnesses of His saving and forgiving grace. Yet many still can't fully grasp the idea of the dead living. Many still need proof. 
And Jesus is gracious and loving as he continues to give that proof. We need to get to know Jesus' plans for the kingdom. We need to find our new normal of proclaiming with our words, our actions, our faithful working as witnesses of Jesus Christ. In his book, Tokens of Trust, An Introduction to Christian Belief, former Archbishop of Canterbury, Owen Williams, tells the story of a young Jewish woman named Eddie Hillesum. Hillesum was in her 20s when the Germans occupied Holland. She was not a conventionally religious person, but between the years of 1941 and 1943, as she watched her world descend into nightmare, she became deeply aware of God's hand on her life. Imprisoned in the transient camp at Westerbrook before being shipped to the gas chambers at Auschwitz, Etta wrote these words, There must be someone to live through it all and bear witness to the fact that God lived, even in these times. And why should I not be that witness? Williams describes Hillesum's commitment in this way. She decided to occupy a certain place in the world, a place where others could somehow connect with God through her. She took responsibility for making God credible in the world. She took responsibility for God's believability. You and I are witnesses of a new and exciting norm. We hear the words of the prophet Isaiah who proclaimed on behalf of God, don't you see I'm doing a new thing? Can we really believe God is doing a new thing? We are witnesses of God's eternal salvation, for we have been saved. And many of us know others who have been saved these many months. We are witnesses of the forgiving grace of Jesus Christ for us and for all as we are continually picked up, put on our feet, brushed off, and sent forward to a world in need of resurrection, in need of salvation, in need of forgiveness. Yes, in need of being given permission to start anew and fresh in the loving care of Jesus Christ the Lord. We may soon get together for that meal, and God will bless it with laughter, tears of joy, and even new loves in our lives. But then Jesus will send us out to do the work of Christ, the work of redeeming the world from all the death and brokenness it has experienced. Do you need proof of such a need? Look around you, beloved, at the Breonna Taylors, the George Floyds, and now the Dante Wrights. Do you need proof of such a need? Look at the struggles with immigration and voter rights. Do you need proof of such a need? Look at the names of each person lost to mass shootings. Do you need proof of such a need as Jesus Christ, alive, risen, saving, and forgiving? then remember the over millions of deaths from COVID-19 across the planet. Do you need proof of such a need? Look at the hole in our own hearts. Look and believe. Yes, believe and step out with a new belief. Jesus is alive and Jesus sends you and me to be witnesses for a new normal, a better normal, a pure and holy normal of life, of mercy and grace. We are not eyewitnesses. How could we be? We didn't encounter the Lord along the Emmaus Road. We weren't in that closed room to see him display his hands and his feet and eat that piece of broiled fish. No, in us, our Lord is looking for a different sort of witness. He's looking for us to be not eyewitnesses, but character witnesses. That sort of witness sometimes has a role to play in court cases. If defense attorneys are angling to undermine the prosecutor's argument, they're likely to call one or more character witnesses. People who know the defendant well, who are willing to vouch for that person, to observe how unlikely it is that their esteemed friend or colleague would ever commit such a crime. You and I are called to be character witnesses for Christ. We can't tell firsthand stories about the resurrection other than the time-worn, smooth as a 
piece of beach glass accounts that have been passed down through the generations. But we can be witnesses to a personal Christ, a living Lord whom we have gotten to know, one who has touched our lives and made a difference, made Easter happen, brought to us resurrection from our dead lives. We bear witness to all people, offering them the proof of resurrection, salvation, and forgiveness for all by the saving grace of Jesus Christ from our own hearts. Easter brings a whole new life, a whole new direction to life, a whole new faith to ministry. We need to get to know what the new norm is. We are to be witnesses to the death and resurrection of Jesus, but also of the need for repentance and of the hope for forgiveness of sins as life takes on a new thing, a new norm. Getting to know. Getting to know. May the mercy and grace of God the Creator and Jesus Christ the Redeemer and the Holy Spirit our Sustainer for the days that are ahead open our hearts and our minds to the new thing. Amen. As we continue worship together, let us enter into a time of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we praise you for the light of new life made possible through Jesus. We praise you for the light of new life that shone on the first witnesses of resurrection. We praise you for the light of new life that continues to shine in our hearts today. We praise you for your love poured out, flooding this world with rivers of grace and hope of rebirth. We praise you for your love poured out into our hearts, providing a living stream for us to drink from that never runs dry. It is tempting to remain in that glow of Easter, the glory of the resurrection, and ignore the hungering world around us. But Jesus has work for us to do. We are called to receive the blessing, not for ourselves alone, but to give it to others, to offer healing, mercy, forgiveness, compassion, hope, and peace. These are difficult things to do, in the face of the anger and hostilities that seem to abound in the world. But we are not alone. You, God, our shepherd, are with us. We pray that the Easter light of life, hope, and joy will live in us each day, and that we will be bearers of that light into the lives of others. Lord of life, we pray for all who bring your word of life, as a light to those in darkness, for those who bring your word of peace to those enslaved by fear, for those who bring your word of love to those in need of comfort. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together using these words as we recite together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Well, it certainly is a joy to be a part of this congregation. And I have seen many instances this week where the love of our community of faith is connecting you to one another and is increasing your love of God and expanding your um, view of your spirituality. This week I've received feedback from folks who have been learning new things in Disciple Bible Study and have been discussing with those around them uh, the the joy and the the knowledge that they received in that study. I've, I've heard feedback from folks who participated 
in our Lenten book study, that that was important to their experience of Holy Week and Lent, and that it may enriched their, uh, their faith as well as helping them feel connected to one another in this time of separation. And I have uh, also received a note this week that reminded me how our connection to one another is vital because of our, 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 connect, our, our belief together in the risen Christ. The letter was sent to me to um, offer some reflection on all of the, the Lenten devotionals um, that she was looking forward to seeing those in her inbox each week. But she continued on to say she lives out of state and she enjoys worshiping online with us so she could virtually be connected with her son who is a part of our fellowship. And so our virtual worship is, is also making connections and supporting and encouraging those of you in our community. And so all of these ways that we've contributed to the ministries of this church, either through your financial support or through your participation or through your contributions to our Lenten studies and uh, devotionals, all of this has had an impact on those in our community around us. And we are indeed transforming lives and, and bringing hope to the world. So I invite you during this time of offering to reflect on what you would like to set before God today.
Christ is alive, let Christians sing His cross stands empty to the sky Let streets and homes with praises ring His love in death shall never die In every insult drift and war Where colors scorn all wealth divide He suffers still, yet loves the more And is the Christ is alive and comes to reign, good news to this and every age, till earth and all creation be with joy, with justice, love and grace. Go in courage and peace, proclaiming the risen Lord to all. Be those who believe and who bring hope and justice to a hungry and hurting world. The peace of the Lord is with you now and forever. In the name of the Creator and of the Redeemer and of the Sustainer. Amen.